Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning into this presentation. My name is Zheng Yang, and I am from UC Santa Barbara and Harvard University. Um, I'm currently based in Santa Barbara, and I, before I begin, I would like to uh, acknowledge the Chumash people, past, present, and future, who are the traditional custodians of this land. Um, today, I'm very happy to be sharing with you um, a documentation project uh, centering around uh, Matu'ul, which is an endangered indigenous language of Taiwan. Um, as I will show in the presentation, Matu'ul can be considered uh, a well-studied uh, language because many aspects of its grammatical structure have been explored in the uh, literature on uh, Austronesian and Formosan languages. Um, however, the community continues to suffer from uh, language shifts uh, due to heavy contact with other dominant languages spoken in Taiwan. Um, and the concern over this has brought together language activists from the community, the many community members, and me as a documentary linguist. Um, although this is still an ongoing project uh, and we're still trying to expand our uh, data collection process, I wanted to uh, sh uh, argue that uh, one essential element uh, that has been pushing the project forward is uh, how each party involved recognizes the unique skills that uh, they can bring into this project. And hopefully we could provide uh, something that uh, other uh, indigenous language interest groups in Taiwan uh, can learn from uh, with, as they develop um, collaborative documentation projects. Okay, um, just some background about the language. So Matu'ul is spoken in Tai'an Township of Miaoli in North Central Taiwan. So uh, on the right hand side right here, we can see that Miaoli is right here located in the North, in North Central Taiwan and Tai'an Township is this area of the county uh, in the East. So there are three Matu'ul speaking villages uh, Qingnan village uh, right here, uh, Jinshui village right here, and Bagua village. Uh, and they are located right here in the uh, northwest of the township. Um, although there have been different uh, subgrouping proposals uh, for Matu'ul, um, it, it is uh, unequivocally an Adayal language and it belongs to the Adayalic subgroup of the Austronesian language family. Uh, because of three Matu'wa speaking villages have been traditionally referred to as the Wenshui area. Uh, in Chinese, we usually refer to Matu'wa as simply as Wenshui Taiyaru or the Wenshui Ataya language. Now, um, Matu'wa is more widely known as Mairinah Atayal in the literature on Formosan and Austronesian languages. Uh, in fact, Mairinah is an exonym and the community members actually prefer Matu'wa. Um, so many aspects of the grammar of the language have been uh, explored in the literature. Um, and this is especially thanks to uh, two preeminent Taiwanese, ling preeminent, uh, Taiwanese linguists, Professor Li Renkui and Professor Huang Mei Jing. So uh, Professor Li has especially uh, looked at uh, published papers in the early 80s on uh, the distinction between male and female lexical forms in Matu'ul, which is pretty unique uh, in the Formo not only in the Formosan context, but also in a larger cross-linguistic uh, perspective. Uh, Professor Huang uh, has published a seminal work on uh, the syntactic structure of Matu'ul, uh, titled A Study of Mainach Syntax. And on the left-hand side, I have a, the cover of um, the 2000 uh, Atayal reference grammar, also by Professor Huang. Um, this grammar is based on uh, Matu'ul as well. Um, in addition, there are also other structural aspects of the language that have been uh, dis uh, studied. So uh, including, but not limited to case mark, the case marking system, verb structure, phonology, um, and clause linkage, and many more. Uh, I've personally worked on uh, clause linkage in Matu'ul. And here I also wanted to mention that uh, one of the earliest uh, studies on clause linkage in Matu'ul is uh, a PhD dissertation from uh, the University of Hawaii in Manoa uh, by Dr. Liu Tai Xiu. Um, despite the, uh, uh, the abundant uh, explorations on the grammar of Matu'ul, uh, the community continues to suffer from drastic language shifts due to heavy contact with many language, many other uh, languages spoken in Taiwan. 
Um, on the one hand, there are the Chinese languages, you know, with uh, Mandarin being the standard language used in the education system and also just basically almost everywhere in the society of Taiwan. Um, and there's also Hakka, uh, um, which uh, is an ethnic group, a Chinese ethnic group in Taiwan. And uh, Miaoli County also happens to have a large, uh, very large um, Hakka population. So uh, many, Hakka, there's also many Hakka residents in Tainan Township as well. In addition to the Chinese languages, there's also the other Atayal varieties uh, spoken, uh, including the Matu Ao variety uh, spoken in Daxing village, which is just south of the Wenshui area in Tainan Township. Um, there's also Skoliak Atayal, which is a dominant variety spoken by the great majority of um, Atayal people in Taiwan. Uh, this variety has especially came to represent the sort of the Atayal indigenous identity in Taiwan, and it's really starting to um, have an impact on uh, youth uh, community members who are already second language learners of Matuwa. Um, of course, the, the whole picture is much more complex than these, but for the interest of time, I have to stop here. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me during the Q&A session. Now, despite the direness of the situation, um, there have been a lot of um, uh, community language activists uh, that are putting efforts into um, uh, preserving the language. And one person that has especially had a leading role is Lao Xing Na Yang Na. Um, so Lao Xing is um, from the Qing'an village. So he is uh, um, Matua speaking uh, as he grew up. And um, he right now, right now he works part-time for the Council of Indigenous Peoples or Yuan Minghui in Chinese, uh, where he regularly designs teaching and testing materials um, and, and, and minister language proficiency tests. Um, and in, in addition to his work for the CIP, he also regularly mentors students to compete in speech contests. Um, and he goes around, uh, uh, he goes to different uh, primary and secondary schools uh, to teach Matuwal and other Ataya uh, varieties. Uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize here is that he's also uh, an active participa participating teacher in a live streaming learning platform uh, administered by the CIP where students and teachers can get together online and, um, and you know, learn the language remotely. Okay, so here, uh, right here, I have a screenshot of uh, one of the review videos that he made um, for the platform. And here I have a video excerpt of a recorded session um, of the live streaming platform, uh, which is freely available on YouTube. Uh, so here, uh, observe how he breaks down the, um, the syllable structures of the word san uh, for winter and how he teaches the kids uh, from three different schools to pronounce this word. Now, um, outside of his work uh, as a language teacher, uh, Lao Xing is also a natural in capturing Matuwa on video as used in its most natural content, uh, setting. Um, in fact, uh, he uh, could be considered an amateur Facebook vlogger um, because his Facebook page is constantly, uh, is regularly uh, updated with posts of him um, involving him uh, make, uh, filming himself uh, around the communities speaking in Matuwa to uh, different community members. Um, and one uh, prominent feature of these videos uh, is that he would uh, introduce the, the rich agricultural and ecological environment in the community where he 
would uh, invite community elders to come and you know talk about uh, the different traditional concepts that are related to um, the community environment. Um, and you know he would also take these uh, take advantage of the situation and do some vocabulary elicitation sessions with the elders and then make videos about these sessions. Um, on the right hand side, we can see a post um, about him visiting the garden of a community elder, uh, Yaki Gagao, where she, uh, right here, she's right here, uh, and she would, uh, you know, talk to him about how to harvest some of the leafy greens that she was growing, and he, right here you can see that he has his blackboard set up, so, you know, anytime he could, he elicits um, a vocabulary word, he could just write them out, write it out, and then just teaches to, to and then teach how to pronounce the words. Um, uh, he also vlogs regularly outside the community where he documents how he participate in uh, different types of events all around Taiwan. Um, so in doing so, he's also bringing Matua language use outside the physical community boundary. Uh, on the right hand side here, we have a post of him uh, taking his, some of his students to compete in a speech contest uh, in Matuol. Um, in, I think this is Atayal, yeah, so Atayal speech contest, uh, but they were using, uh, they were using Matuol. And here you have, you can see how he was using this chance, uh, taking this chance to uh, showcase the student's uh, pronunciation by having them read out some of the sentences that he writes up on the blackboard. In the middle right here, uh, this is a post of him and his wife uh, going to the Islamic Cultural Festival uh, held in, tai in Taipei. Um, and on the left hand side, you can see this, this is a video of him uh, interacting with uh, this gentleman from uh, Morocco who was selling some of their uh, traditional clothing. And Lao Xing was using Matuwa to introduce uh, this gentleman. And he also used um, the Moroccan Arabic to introduce something else back to Lao Xing. Now, um, our collaborative project began uh, with me reaching out to Lao Xing because I had a uh, research project that uh, focuses on cloth linkers and linking constructions uh, in Matuwal. Um, so I was able to get around the community and record some pair story narrations, uh, other types of monologues, and uh, you can say semi formal, uh, semi formal interview style conversations. Um, however, once he took the lead in generating ideas of what to record, uh, the diversity of data uh, that are recorded, that were recorded has been greatly expanded. Um, so, so far we've been uh, making, we have made videos about uh, different uh, plants, different types of plant fruit, uh, and sometimes even how to harvest them. Um, we've recorded some hunting trap making processes and also how these traps work. Um, and one time he's even took me, he's even taken me to, uh, uh, to go on a, a hunting trip where we were able to document the complete hunting practices, uh, the, the, hunt, the complete hunting process uh, from, you know, making, doing the prayer to uh, the end of the process where he and his family members were dissecting whatever was caught. Um, here you can see a, a picture of him literally leading the way when he was taking me into uh, the Shiding Mountain in Taipei to find uh, rare plants to make videos of. Um, in our uh, project, we also regularly partner with other language activists who would uh, join the videos and then um, in, uh, explain uh, some uh, how things work, uh, of course, in Matuwal. So here we have uh, Da Yak or Li Fu Cheng in Chinese. Uh, he, uh, in this video, he was explaining um, and illustrating how the Bashi Ba Bao trap works. So this is a bird capturing trap and uh, we can watch a short clip of this. <laughs> Yanani 
Bak suwalai, bakun hatali. Moni ru, mohi hatalan. Pasiwawa usan ko hani, hani ka pasiwawa. Aniaw ta sana tu ya. Um, in addition, we've also, uh, he's also invited me to join uh, one of the, what we would call cultural elicitation sessions um, uh, that are regularly held within the community where he would invite elders to come uh, and talk about their past experiences where he would also elicit some vocabulary and ecological knowledge uh, from the elders. Uh, one thing to note is that these are regularly held sessions with, where uh, community youths would be present as well. Um, and we were able to document some of these uh, sessions. Um, in addition, we also recorded some casual conversations between him and one or more um, el community elders. Um, currently, we've uh, collected a little more than five hours of, of audio and audio visual recordings. Um, and we've been, uh, we've continued to, we've been trying to transcribe and analyze the data in the lawn together. Uh, and, you know, in the process, we've also had conversations about revising the orthography and, um, uh, and on uh, what, uh, where to archive the data uh, sometime in the future. Um, so I would say that here we're really taking small uh, baby steps and I'm not trying to say that we're, we have this you know, well planned out uh, project um, that we're sort of like carrying out. Uh, instead, I think uh, the, our project really echoes with uh, the theme of the conference this year, which is recognizing relationships. Uh, so on the one hand, um, we all have the, all the parties involved have this shared goal of producing records of natural and scripted Matawa speech. Um, on the, uh, and first of all, this is because uh, the descriptive materials from the linguistics literature in Formosan languages uh, are generally inaccessible to the community members because Formosan linguistics is still essentially an Anglophone uh, literature uh, or Anglophone tradition. Um, and also, even though the language activists from the community uh, have been designing pedagogical materials, uh, they are still um, usually based on Chinese translations and they may fall short of day-to-day -day cultural elements that characterize the community. Um, and, you know, really capturing uh, natural and scripted speech in Madhuwa uh, really complements uh, the, the, uh, the materials that we already have of the language. Uh, on the other hand, there's also this, sh this shared recognition of the unique skills that each party can bring into the project. So Lao Xing, of course, was contributing uh, the most to this whole project with his vlogging ex expertise and just and also just like his passion of capturing Madhuwa being used uh, uh, online <laughs> in videos. Um, and then the community elders and other activists uh, were also very happy to be contributing to the video contents just by sharing their the knowledge and also their language of linguistic skills that they have in Matuwa. And me as a linguist, I merely just bring in some of my academic training and we were able to sort of push this project forward uh, by creating a variety of um, videos. So uh, uh, for our next steps, uh, we're, we've been having conversations about how to bring in uh, community youth. So uh, as I had mentioned, the uh, the cultural elicitation sessions have already had regular participants from uh, the youth community members, and maybe we could have some more uh, trainings uh, where they could actually participate in the data transcription or analysis process. Um, and then, of course, due to the COVID-19 limitations, we need to talk about how to continue the data transcription or analysis process remotely. Um, and eventually we want to reach an, a wider audience to see how we can promote uh, our type of collaborative work to other um, indigenous language interest groups uh, in Taiwan. Um, and finally, this is not really one of the top priorities of Lao Xing uh, because he's just been, uh, he, he's just so busy with all, all the diverse, diverse works that he's been doing. Um, but uh, in the future, we also uh, anticipate having some more collaborations uh, that can lead to you know, academic publications and or presentations uh, like this one.
Um, and yeah, finally, uh, I wanted to uh, advertise um, the other, some other platforms for Lao Xing's own data. So he has created a Facebook group uh, called Guide Na Matuwal or the language of Matuwal. And he also has a YouTube channel. Uh, so basically his Chinese name, Liu Ren San, uh, where he, was, he would constantly upload videos. So these would not be vlogs, but just, sim just videos. And he's been working on, uh, you know, uh, integrating the transcription and translations uh, as subtitles in these videos. Um, and he would also shoot some uh, inner, inner, uh, explanations and vocabulary reviews uh, in the in, sort of integrate these things into the videos that he had, he, he already had. Um, and finally, um, although he uh, has declined to uh, join the join the conference and the presentation today, um, he uh, actually made a video of him singing in Matuwal uh, to uh, express his excitement about uh, over um, how Matuwal is really reaching a, a wider audience, um, especially an international audience uh, through this presentation. Um, in this video, he uh, presents a song where, and it also features one uh, his uh, newly born grandson who he now um, speaks Matuwal to uh, on a day, uh, on a regular basis. Is la we la we hin la we mu la we mu ka ita tu he. Balakti mu huka hawao, man balakti mu makyano ko. Is haniyan sa mi kitali, haniyan sa mi tingkalangan. Makibak sindi ni utas, makibak sindi ni aki. Rakita i umi tu gaga gaga sinvin manavaki mahuai ti muka pasivak makita lai ti bavonia pagana ita i manavoku otoka kahe hanero. Makita lai tai vavau niya. Lai. Ta. Ahoi jimu. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, joining this presentation. Uh, I look forward to uh, discussing with you more uh, on this topic uh, during the Q&A session. Thank you.